Now, joining us today, I don't usually have a guest up every three or four weeks, but, but this guest has been so on target with the economy, I want to be able to pick his brain. And I've had listeners ask, hey, have Harry Dent back on. We'd like to ask him different questions about the economy and the world to get his take on it. So coming up at about 35 after or so, we will open the phones uh, specifically for Harry Dent of HarryDentResearch.com. He says, get ready for the Dow to be at 6,000. Um, and more and more analysts are saying that the economic implosion is nigh. In many areas, it's already hit. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And we will get you up and on the air. That's 800-259-9231. But first, if you're a radio listener... You can go to harrydentresearch.com and see all these graphs for yourself. Uh, but if you're a radio listener, you can also go to infowars.com forward slash show on your Droid, your iPhone, whatever the case is. We have high quality free uh, streaming of the radio slash TV show. And I started out doing this as a pioneer of adding video to radio 19 years ago, but on Air 20. Because people would say, you don't have photos of UN signs saying it's under UN control at Big Bend or at uh, the Grand Canyon. So I started you know, streaming video to show people. Uh, and, and of course, now it's imitated by Glenn Beck and countless others. And, and I'm glad. That's just part of you know, modern times coming. But you can go to Infowars.com forward slash show or PrisonPlanet.com forward slash show. And you can find the free video and audio feeds. And you can see us showing you these graphs of what's happening uh, to oil, what's happening to the S&P uh, uh, indexes, what's happening uh, to the Dow Jones, all of it with Harry Dent. So Harry, thank you so much for coming on with us today. We're going to get into a whole host of different economic issues, but uh, more and more we do see the establishment analysts are starting to sound more like you, saying they believe something bigger than 2008 is coming. Yeah, you know, we've already we've seen every bubble that's come up. You know, the tech bubble in 2000 that peaked and then crashed, and then the more recent one in 2007. Now we got an even bigger bubble. Every bubble's gone higher, and every crash has gone lower. And there's a simple reason for that: the fundamental trends that were great in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, demographics and internet and technology, the things that really make an economy grow, innovation, the aging of people into the most productive. These things are gone. Ever since 2007, governments, central banks around the world are simply just printing money to make up for the economic weakness and doing it in greater and greater amounts. And of course, that's like taking more and more of a drug and hoping things work out. It doesn't work out. And so we have to come down harder. We have more debt than we had in 2007 and 8 at the end of the last crisis. Uh, private debt's come down a little bit, but government debt's gone way up. Countries like Japan, massively more debt. Uh, but the biggest thing to us, you know, Alex, is we really, number one, focus on demographics. It's the one thing you can predict about an economy and its people, how old they're going to be, how much they earn, spend, and do everything as they age. I can even predict when people weigh the most or, or eat the most calories or, or drive the most miles on their cars. We, we can predict cradle to grave what people do. In 2015, like 2008 last time around, and 1990 before that with the Japanese. This is going to be a shift year for demographics, because in 1990, the Japanese uh, baby boom started to turn down after a massive real estate and stock bubble. We predicted that 89 was going to burst, while the rest of the world was going to boom, and their baby boom in U.S. and Europe were just getting going. It did burst, even though the rest of the world did well. It shows how powerful demographics are. We said 20 years ago, and increasingly, hey, after 2007, the baby boomers in the U.S. are done. They're going to peak on average, and the economy will start to slow down. And, of course, that's why governments have had to step up so much stimulus. But there's another thing important that happens this year in 2015. The everyday person did peak in 2007. At age 46, that's when the average person spends the most money. Well, the most affluent people the 20% that drive over 50% of our income and spending still and are being goosed up by all of this QE because it makes the stock market and their financial assets go up. And this 20% this owns like 90% of the financial assets. They're doing better than ever, but age 53, that's at the end of last year, that's when they peak and turn down. Their kids leave the nest. They slow down in spending. 
And the same year is when car sales, the last of the major segments, because because housing obviously peaked first in the early 2000s, and then furniture uh, in 2007, the other big sector. Well, the last big sector is automobiles. Automobile sales are going to are going to turn down in the next couple of years, and people are not going to know why. And and some of the smartest investors, George Soros and Warren Buffett in the world, are making major acquisitions and investments in car retail dealership, the worst place you can be. So we use demographics to look around the corner. 2015 is going to be a pivotal year. We warned last year that Germany and Italy were going to start to go in Europe, and then one country after the next falls off the cliff. And that's why we call this recent book The Demographic Cliff. It started with Japan, a giant baby boom peaking and turning down. Then it shifted to the U.S. Now it's shifting to the affluent sectors of the U.S. and to Europe, one country after the next. If these central bankers think they've had to print a lot of money thus far, they're going to have to do way more, and, and the markets just aren't going to tolerate it. You can only take so much of a drug before you die of the drug itself. Now, uh, Harry, you broke this down last time. Your new book gets into it, and I want to look at some of these other graphs that you've sent along. I want to look at what's happening with the major stock market indexes. But shifting gears specifically out of the big issue into all the sub-issues, we see this um, liberal obsession in the West of not having children, of having children being bad. And I've had different uh, demographers on to break down the fact that we need one point, uh, you know, two people for every person. So for two people, we need 2.2, 2.4 children to be born in a country. Uh, and that we uh, are not doing that now. The replacement rate is 2.2 for every two people. Because obviously some people die in car wrecks or whatever, so you need more than two people to be born for every two people living just to keep the culture and economy going. But that's not happening. Japan's 1.3 children, Germany's 1.3, Italy's 1.3. Some are even lower. This is accelerating. Then meanwhile, we have unskilled third world populations that are still uh, climbing. Uh, and I see so many policies by the West being put into place to pretty much kill the West. I mean, uh, I don't think there's any doubt that we're seeing the, the West commit suicide. Yeah, you know, and unfortunately, this, this is happening everywhere. Fewer kids per family. Like you say, most emerging countries outside of China uh, are, are growing at more than replacement rate. But all Western countries, with a few exceptions like Australia and Switzerland, where, where only because they attract a lot of immigrants, are they more than replacing themselves? Every major Western country will see the next generation be smaller than this one. That has devastating consequences, not only slowing population, but even faster slowing workforce. Sure. How do you grow with less and less people working? But, but, but even more than that, in, in the home construction and in home and real estate industry, there's going to be more people dying than buying homes because old people are sellers when they die or move into nursing home and young people buy. So, it's going to cause huge changes that are very, very easy to project, Alex, but nobody sees it. Uh, economists are hip. They do understand we're not replacing ourselves. They do understand there's going to be like two workers for every one retiree, which is absolutely not sustainable, especially at ever-rising benefits that are not adjusted for life expectancy. We'd be retiring at age 75 today if we adjusted since Social Security. Sure. For expectancy. Well, we've got to go to break. When we come back, I want to look at Russia. I want to look at other things in the world economy and get your take on what you think's behind some of these really aggressive, dangerous moves, in my view, uh, by the West to destabilize Russia, uh, where you see oil going and a lot more. And then phone calls uh, for our guest all coming up straight ahead. Again, I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And if you want to see these graphs and more, go to Infowars.com forward slash show. You can see it all right there. But your calls are coming up for Mr. Dent. Straight ahead. Stay with us. When an emergency happens, you could be left to fend for yourself and your family. An outbreak of contagious disease can happen anywhere. Because we're faced with more diseases than ever before, we need a better solution than ever before. Fortunately, there is a simple, effective way to protect yourself. Supernatural Silver is a revolutionary silver solution that is clinically shown to be several hundred times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. And it's powerful enough to help protect you and your family from deadly viruses, bacterias, and fungus. Supernatural Silver is effective against more than 
than 500 different disease-causing pathogens without encouraging drug resistance and without side effects. Supernatural Silver is scientifically supported and is the number one choice of thousands for improved health and immune system support. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the code SILVER2015 for 30% off. That's SupernaturalSilver.com. Give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed the results I have with your product. I've suffered with bouts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Whey, I know a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Don't forget the nightly news will be transmitted tonight, 7 o'clock central at prisonplanet.tv with the rest of the InfoWars Nightly News crew. I'm Alex Jones. Harry Dent is our guest, harrydentresearch.com. You can find his latest book, The Demographic Cliff, uh, which is absolutely essential reading. I know that callers want to talk to our guests with their specific uh, economic questions. That's coming up in the next segment. But since you were on a month ago or so, or three weeks ago, there's been a lot of developments, a lot of saber rattling. John McCain saying, let's back up Ukraine militarily against Russia. Uh, these are in, in, just insane statements out in the open. The media claims Obama is vacillating on Ukraine. No, he's not. He's just not admitting uh, that they are sending more troops, more armor, more weapons in there in a hot war with Russia. I mean, I, I think it's clear that's going on. Uh, just economically, how does this affect things? Why would the Western establishment, in your view, I mean, you've ran a lot of operations for Bain Capital. You're a smart guy. You've been around the world looking at this. What are your, what are your colleagues saying as well about what's going on here? Because a lot of the former analysts and current analysts say this is one of the most dangerous things they've ever seen. Well, you know, it is, and it's because we're in a, in a dangerous cycle. 
uh, ever since 9-11, we call it the geopolitical cycle. Uh, things were wonderful in the world from 1983 and into maybe early 2001. And then we had 9-11 hit, and it's been one terrorist attack, one civil war after the next. And this is just another thing. Russia broke up when we started winning the Cold War, and they kind of had to surrender into the last cycle being positive. And that was a big relief for the world when, when that Cold War threat wore off. Well, we're back in it. And, and now it's the Middle East, and it's Boko Haram, and it's ISIS. But, you know, Russia broke up, and it's in Putin's interest um, to kind of put it back together. I mean, their demographics are poor, especially as you go forward. Oil prices are dropping. The ruble has collapsed. They're in big trouble. Anything he can do to expand, this is exactly what Hitler did um, in the Great Depression. When everything was down and Germany had gone through a hyperinflation crisis up, he decided the best way to grow was to the beggar thy neighbor. Take over your neighbors. Uh, you know, it, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Lebensraum. Yeah. Yeah, a hostile acquisition, you know. And, and so, you know, that's what he wants to do. And what he does, like any other uh, uh, guy like him, when he sees an opening, goes for it, then he kind of backs off for a while, you know. So he's just looking for openings. I mean, he's got every reason to go into Ukraine. And the question is, should Europe and the U.S. fight him? Because we keep trying to get out of wars, but there's more civil wars in the Middle East and other places. And here we got this. These stuff do threaten trade. They do threaten a lot of things for Europe and us. So, so you know, it's kind of this other thing. You know, do we go in there or not? But it's hard to win these wars. And, and, and we're, we're kind of like running out of the ability to do this sort of thing. But if I tell you, this geopolitical cycle um, does not turn up until around early 2020. So we keep telling people, whether it's more civil wars, where it's the rise in terrorist activity now in Europe, which we're not surprised at, ISIS getting more and more defiant and, and, and just brutal. This is likely to continue for the next... Yeah, what does the demographic bloom in Muslims in the Middle East mean, the, that, that population explosion? I mean, that's just a natural thing then to invade other countries. Yeah, I mean, the, the demo, they, they are one of the highest demographic, you know, for births, uh, their whole population. The poorer populations in general have higher birth rates. What I noticed the other day, I was just, just doing an analysis for, for one of our articles in our newsletters, and I was just saying, look, you know, look at this rising terror thing in Europe, and where does it come from, and is it, is it all Muslims or not? And, you know, it's not. Number one, the, the countries, the Middle East and North Africa, are the only region that have an absolute, you know, 90% plus Muslim. So that's number one flag. The second thing, which is more important to me, it's in the Middle East with a sudden rise in wealth of oil that these countries didn't just gradually move into the modern era like, like Indonesia or, or Bangladesh or other countries or Malaysia that have high Muslim population. They were suddenly thrown, you know, this, this, you know, this wealth in the West versus the kind of backwardness and poverty of their, of their nations. And then you go and turn around and look at countries like Indonesia that, that's, uh, uh, almost all Muslim, and I've been in Indonesia twice extensively. These, these people don't have any civil wars to, to speak about. They don't have insurgencies and all this discontent. So it's where you get this concentration, where you get this clash of, of West versus uh, uh, older cultures that you get this. And I tell you, this is bad. These people are fighting for their life. They think they're right. That's what we don't get. They think they are right. And they have to do this, and they'll go to any extreme. And that's what makes it so dangerous. The same thing. Putin's back in a corner. He's got to do something, or Russia just died. And the West is trying to basically cut off their oil sales. I yeah. mean, the West is trying to kill Russia. And what do you expect a bear to do when it's down yeah. in a corner on its knees, being attacked by ten wolves? It's, it's going to come out swinging. And the elite are very reckless to be pushing this. I mean, and that's why experts are really freaked out right now. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back with your phone calls and our guest, Mr. Dent. We're on the march. Questions of Harry Dent, harrydentresearch.com. You can find his books uh, there on the site and, of course, all the graphs as well. I'm going to give him a chance to hit any other big issues that he wants to recap or cover before we go any further. Uh, but briefly here... Uh, please don't forget that it's only five ninety-five a month to become an InfoWars Nightly News member. You go to InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. It's been around now for 14 years. I've been on air 20, but we've had the site for 14. It's got all my films, a ton of archival footage, the nightly news, uh, special live events, rants, uh, videos exclusive to the site. 
and your purchase, five ninety five a month, it's less than that if you sign up for a year. Uh, 20 people can use each username. So get your friends and family watching. That's 20 people at one time. So it's 20 memberships for $5.95 a month. And it is your purchase of the memberships that funds this operation. And again, if you vote with your dollars and promote liberty-based, hardcore, reality-based media, it will expand, it will take over. And we've been doing that. I don't know, six, seven years ago, we were reaching maybe a million and a half people a day with all the different platforms, you know, maybe six, seven, eight million people a week. Now it's well over three million a day, just the radio show. You add it all together. We conservatively reach 20 million people. But here's what's different. Less than half of that's in the U.S. And we are popular in the U.S., but most talk shows and things, quote, target a demographic. We don't target a demographic. We target humanity. So we have listeners in Japan and in South Africa and in Russia and in Mexico and in Brazil. And InfoWars stickers and signs get put up all over the world. But that's 20 million people worldwide from YouTube to all the different platforms that see our videos or listen to the radio show. We can't measure all the Facebook and Twitter and the rest of it. Conservatively, 20 million. Imagine if a fraction of the 20 million went and bought Survival Shield X2, True Nation Iodine. That's the good halogen that so many people are deficient in. A, they would really you know, get a good response and would come back and be a repeat buyers. And then we would be massively funded to just do incredible things, dwarfing what we've done so far. We have a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the people that tune into this radio show or watch this television simulcast that purchase the products. Look. We have our own problems. We can't keep in supply Made in America t-shirts or the Molon Labe. In fact, I'm about to have to pull the trigger on Central American or something shirts and say we don't have American in stock. We just can't get it in the numbers we want of, say, the camouflage. And I haven't done it yet. The point is, is that a lot of it's just the market scale. We've got to gear up to a level to where we can even reach our listeners. So it's a symbiotic situation. We don't get funded like NPR with 400 plus million of taxpayer money every year. And they have pledge drives to push all their anti-human socialist garbage. We don't uh, get billions in stimulus money like the parent company of MSNBC who then uh, they gave over $100 million of stimulus money directly to that outfit. And people like Rachel Maddow got raises off your tax money. They have no viewers. Of course, they've got to be state sponsored. Th they're really state run media. We are funded by viewers and listeners like you. So spread the word. It's having a huge effect. Keep it up. Redouble your efforts. We're having a big effect. Really creating talking points throughout the political spectrum that get us back to Americana basic ideas, not all the fake talking points to confuse the public that establishment media puts out. We're having a huge effect. And if you'll just buy the high-quality nutraceuticals, if you'll buy the Survival Shield X2 and get a free bottle of uh, ancient defense when you do that, when you go and you get for Valentine's Day the super mellow, super female vitality, you've heard the rave reviews. We haven't really gotten any negative reviews. It's going to blow you away. You're going to keep buying it. We're going to be able to self-fund and really make history together. So it's a win-win-win, win-win-win. But you got to vote with your dollars. Infowarslife.com, prisonplanet.tv, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And I want to thank all of you that do purchase from us and do support us and our sponsors as well. Like Mr. Dent, he, he's not on because he became a sponsor. He spent a little bit of money with us, did some advertising for his book. I mean, that's what it's all about. We're all symbiotically, who are promoting liberty and free market, working together. But we're at war because they've attacked us with the collectivists that are seeking to shut that down. And that's my next question for Mr. Dent. Then I want him to finish up any other points and go to calls. He just talks about, and you just talk about, sir, hard demographics, historical cycles. But you've got all the new fraudulent flash trading computers. You've got all the new gaming systems that you've talked about. How does that fit in? And how does the Cloward and Piven socialist crony capitalist model fit in where they don't care if they're in more people? They don't care if things start imploding because they've decided to go into a system of artificial scarcity where people are poor as a social management system. I'm sure you're familiar with the UN models and Cloward and Piven and that whole school of thought. That's why they rationalize creating such economic chaos 
is because th the establishment for uh, to a great extent is exempt now they're lobbying for a hundred trillion in every decade in new taxes at davos as a wealth transfer for the middle class to pacify the poor masses but as we know a lot of the Davos crowd ends up getting some of that stimulus money for themselves. So, so how do the crony capitalists feed into all this? Well, it happens even in more capitalistic countries like the U.S., especially in this part of the cycle. Economists talk about money supply. We look at money velocity, the rate at which money is turning over of its own volition, not just the Fed creating more of it magically. When money supply is going up, uh, and above average, it means we're investing in the future. We're making investments that pay off with higher wages and, and profits and, and, and growth. But when it starts to go down, it means, oh, businesses and people are getting in a speculative mode. People are flipping condos or flipping tech stocks. Businesses are borrowing money cheap, but courtesy of the government, buying back their own stocks, exaggerate earnings per share when they're not really growing that much. So, so you get into this speculation. And when you start doing that, bubbles build. You're not really making progress, it's artificial, and then these bubbles will burst. So, so we're, we're already crossed that line by our analysis where we're going into a deflationary mode. And, and you, again, you can keep creating more money, but it gets, but it gets spent and lent and, and leveraged less and less and less. Uh, and all it does is create bubbles at birth. So, so this is a very, very dangerous point we're at in the economy. Well, I understand the lay of the land, and, and, and you broke it down very accurately, unlike any other I know. But, but what I'm getting at here is you've got this other school of thought in the ruling establishment, and it's not unified, but it's a dominant group, who openly push collectivism, socialism, and artificial scarcity, and how it's good to be poor for the general public, and how we shouldn't want better lives, uh, they're really setting up this austerity is sexy idea as a way of re-engineering the economy scientifically uh, to basically make people poor. I mean, I see that happening. Well, well, the reason uh, they're not getting any of the benefits, when you get in a speculative economy, the people with the money and like you say, the special interests and corporate, these, uh, these oligarchs, they're the ones that have the, the money and, and the leverage. So, so the everyday person's real wages have been going down since 2000, but the uh, profits and, and the incomes and wealth going to the top, 0.1%, 1%, and 10% have skyrocketed as strongly as in the Roaring Twenties. So these speculative economies, which are, a lot of it is, when, when governments push interest rates and make money free, and when they give out money in all types of ways or print money, it causes money to be abused. There is no free lunch in life because there shouldn't be a free lunch gets abused. And, and we're getting this all around the world. It can be fake uh, programs to say they're helping the poor. Most of the foreign aid overseas in the places like Africa has just gone to the warlords and, and the tribal leaders. The money there always ends up there because they've got corruption. So what I'm seeing is, all of the gains in the economy, and especially since 2008 and 9, when we had all this QE, has gone to the very top echelons. It is definitely not going to the average. And person. I totally fact. agree with you. That's an absolute fact. And, and so I think you just boiled it down. We're moving towards the warlord economy, the conquest economy, away from the free market economy. It's always a mix historically. Nobody's perfect, but we're moving away from the Swiss model into the uh, Congo model, uh, undoubtedly, and I even see elites saying they're going to have armored redoubt cities in sectors. We're all going to be in poor grids. They're moving towards a Hunger Games model uh, consciously, almost like they've decided it can't be fixed anyways. So why not just embrace the warlord model? Where do you see that going? Well, I know it, it starts because the rich get richer. In any time of innovation, and I call it the fall season, like the roaring 20s or in the last decade or two, when there's innovations like information technologies moving mainstream, there's certain people that will move faster, will innovate more, will be more entrepreneurial. But once that starts happening, you get this elite special interest group, and all they really do is keep saying, we want more of the same. This is working for us. And so that's what's happening. It's got motion behind it, and the government is responding to special interests and not the people. I mean, it's not just free market capitalism's failing. It does get too greedy at times, but democracy is failing here because people are not objecting to it and, and, and are letting it happen. People have got to say, no, you know, we can't let the economy be rigged. And it is rigged. It's rigged in investments. It's rigged in, in, in by the Fed pushing up stock markets, but not wages. Of course, the average person isn't going to benefit. And 
the uh, very rich are going to do better than ever. And you can only go so far until you get a revolution. People start chopping off heads. That's it. And then Soros and others are openly saying they want to take the revolution that they've helped engineer by, by, by rigging the economy and screwing everybody and then use that to engineer a false socialist revolution to bring in even more control that the very same cronies are supporting because they're offshore and exempt from it and want to work with a more centralized government. So, yeah. our, And that, that's more of a something for nothing economy doesn't work. What happens if these bubbles burst? Then the uh, then the cost of education is going to plummet, and healthcare, a lot of things, and the rich aren't going to have this financial advantage from owning highly appreciated assets. We're not not having to work. It will shift the balance back to the everyday person. This is exactly what happened with the Great Depression. It was a great reset. We had bubbles back there in the 20s. It got extreme rich versus everyday people. When the bubbles burst, yes, it hurt the everyday person at first, but from then on, the everyday person's income and wealth grew faster than the richest. So we need this reset. It is false to say, oh, we can take this bubble economy and now engineer it for the everyday person. No, this is definitely being engineered against the everyday person. And I, I mean, I think the establishment has not been reading history books. Uh, elites almost never get away with what they're attempting right now. Exactly. No, no, it never lasts. I, I just did a big issue in my newsletter on this income inequality. When it gets to these extremes, it never lasts. It tells you you're at the made top of a major stock market and bubble peak that will not be seen for decades, and you're going to have to go through a, a big reset. And that's what we try to help people do in our book. And, you know, by the way, our book today on, on, on HarryDentResearch.com, it's free if you just pay uh, shipping and handling $4.95, because we want people to hear this. You need If you look at what we say and listen to what people like you say, it's absolutely clear what's going on. There's nothing unclear about it at all. Well, it's, I didn't know that. I mean, sometimes people say, sometimes people say free book. And then it's fifteen dollars for shipping. Four ninety nine. I mean, yeah. that really is what shipping cost. That's what it costs us. That's not even the cost of the of the handling. Well, that's amazing. So you're offering the book free today. Sure, yeah. You guys pay five dollars for shipping, and, and basically you get a free book. Well, HarryDentResearch.com. Everybody needs to get the book. It's excellent. I want to go to some phone calls now. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Steve in North Carolina. Thanks for holding her on the air. Hello, gentlemen. Go ahead. Um, your watchers have limited time and information to do researching. I've kind of stumbled on some information that uh, I just wanted to verify with you guys. That is kind of sure, brother. Go ahead and ask your question. Basically, what it has to do with is is um, Goldman Sachs. Uh, they had an article they posted back in 2007, 2008 on their website called Bricks Beyond. Uh, we gave ten billion dollars in bailout money to Goldman Sachs. Um, well, it was a lot more than ten billion dollars worth, but uh, yeah, ten billion. Ten billion. It was a lot um, more than ten billion. It was it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just like I said, limited time research is what we have. Um, but what my what I'm getting to is that kind of threw a cog in in my spokes because the IMF versus the BRICS, uh, the petrodollar things that are going on. Um, to find out that Goldman Sachs that we bailed out is heading up and constructing the bricks is what this document states. Yeah, they're heavily involved. Uh, the, the, it's Trilateral Commission. They're building three giant global corporate super governments and transferring national sovereignty into those. Senator Goldwater leaked it all back when they were first proposing it. And so when they claim that the Federal Reserve System is in competition with the bricks, it's total theater. Uh, at least at one level, the Russians and Chinese are wanting to move to BRICS, thinking it's their alternative, but it's it's part of the same uh, larger structure, in my view. But that's a really great question. Hundreds of billions since 2008 uh, have been wow. given to mainly foreign banks out of the banker bailout package. Mr. Dent, your comment on that s statement? Yeah, and more than that, you know, just the U.S. alone, three and a half trillion in free money printing. This goes. Is this. They, they buy these bonds, inject new money into the financial system. If they'd have given this three and a half trillion to households, we could have sent thirty thousand dollars per household. Do you think? Don't you think people would rather have that? This has all gone into financial institutions. It's been more like ten to eleven trillion worldwide. So yes, there's bailout money, there's, there's special interest money, but but this broad QE is just creating money that goes into financial institutions and turns into a, a, a gambling casino.
Goldman Sachs makes most of their money not on investment banking anymore, and these brokerage firms don't do it as much on brokerage or banks on banking. They're speculating on markets that are rigged where they can leverage up, borrow money for nothing, leverage up, and make high profits on low-risk investments until the bubbles burst. And then they all go down, and then they're all going to be wanting bailouts again. Sure. I mean, Goldman Sachs is the last person anybody should give a bailout. They do just fine on their own greed. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, we got to jump. Jerry in West Virginia, go ahead. Alex, thank you for taking my call. I'm calling for the closure of the United Nations uh, in New York. It is the biggest joke and the waste of money. It appears to be doing nothing, never did anything, and it just... Uh, well, it's trying to usurp U.S. Model. sovereignty, so, it, I mean, it does do something, and... Basically, as a criminal well, I, organization. I beg your difference. I don't think it does anything. But I think with the collapse of the U.S., the only outlet we have is to start a war with Ukraine to get everybody taken away from the realities of the war, just like sports do. And thirdly, I would like to see everybody out the politicians and out their foibles and out their roundabout ideas and then begin to really put the pressure on the politicians that they fess up to their faults and that may be a way of getting back at uh, some of the revenge we need to do at the moment i'm 73 and i'm worried about the future of social no i hear you brother i hear you they're planning to loot that quick question for dan he can answer it after the break do you have any questions for dan yes i have a question what's happening to social security great question jerry we'll try to answer that straight ahead they're getting ready to loot the education funds that ought to tell you where they're going. Private education funds. It's more than three months ago, five months ago. Russia deploying tactical nuclear arms in Crimea. NATO's tactical nuclear weapons must go. Being moved in up against Russia. Does Russia think their new nuclear weapons could win a war? Forbes. No longer unthinkable. Should U.S. ready for limited nuclear war? Breaking out of defense. Russia has threatened nuclear attacks, says Ukraine Defense Minister. Newsweek. Well, we saw an explosion that looks like a nuke and damaged houses 15 miles away. I'm not saying it's not a chemical plant, but it's not getting a lot of attention in Ukraine, and it looks bad. And I've grown up in Texas and seen chemical plants blow up, and they have multiple explosions afterwards that are just as big or bigger. So uh, this, 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 this does not look like... Uh, anything I've ever seen but a, a, a nuke. That doesn't mean that it, it was a nuke, but it's okay to ask that question because we're not getting the truth out of Russia. That's coming up. Uh, right now, Cliff, thanks for holding. You're listening on 90.1 in Austin. Uh, go ahead, Cliff, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, glad to talk, glad I got you. I, uh, have you ever heard of the uh, Shemitah by Jonathan Don? You know, my audio is breaking up a little bit from you. Uh, maybe you're clear to dent, but I can't really understand you. Have I ever heard of what? The Shemita. It's a book by Jonathan Kahn. Uh, no, I haven't. Tell us about it. Well, he gives the aspect of everything that's been happening in our world. God has allowed it to happen because we haven't been following his ways. So I would suggest that you get the book because it says a lot about our country in it, and what's going to happen. And this is only part of what's been going on as far as God allowed the World Trade Center to be brought down because of our arrogance. Well, I do think that great wealth creates great decadence and arrogance, and then corruption sets in. And I am a Christian. Um, one of my biggest problems is the establishment churches are telling people not to be politically involved. Uh, and, and so America's moral compass seems to be broken. Let me get Mr. Dent's take on that. Yeah, no, I, I just find the same thing. I don't comment on religion because, because you know, you turn off people or not. But but we, I see the same thing. When things get this extreme in wealth and stuff, everything gets corrupted by the special interests. A, a small uh, group of people have so much power at every level in religion and politics and business uh, that, that, that it cannot be any other way. That's why we have cycles. You know, God, the universe... Natural systems never go too far in one direction without resetting and going the other direction. We can't go up forever without getting way out of balance, and we can't go down. And when things go up, people think they'll go up forever, and I, that's why I talk to people. I prove to them otherwise. And when things go down, people think it'll go down forever. Neither is true. These ups and downs correct each other. That's why capitalism works better than top-down planning. 
Uh, I just had the crew pop in my head. We're actually going to be interviewing on air next month the author uh, of the book uh, that the caller just raised. So uh, thank you, caller, for calling in uh, with that information. Uh, now, before we go uh, any further uh, with our uh, guest, uh, and, and, and by the way, uh, that book is, uh, all, he's also written the book, The Harbinger. Again, if you're a radio listener and it sounds like I'm bumbling around, it's because they're flashing stuff on screen in live time. Uh, so this is a, a transmission where we're very uh, interactive uh, and things are uh, unfolding uh, as we go along here. Uh, let's go ahead now and go to another caller. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Dylan in Illinois. Dylan, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, yes, uh, I noticed that uh, the oil prices has not only affected Russia, but affected China's real estate uh, prices to go down and causing slow uh, growth in their economy in the last four months. And it's affected Texas housing boom and uh, retail stores are closing and malls are closing. How do you know if a real estate crash is coming from China, biggest bubble? Well, I mean, you know, Dent's been saying that uh, China's going to be the big place to see the bubble probably first break. And I just saw the Chinese government come out and revise their numbers last week. I saw a lot of analysts say that uh, clearly now China has crested and is starting to really accelerate a downward spiral. Can you elaborate on that, Harry? Yeah, first of all, China, I mean, China has to be growing slower than they say because they never tell you the truth there. Or commodity prices wouldn't be falling because China's the largest buyer of commodities to feed their export and industrial machine in the world now by far. So, so I mean, that's one thing. Yes, commodities going down and oil is good for the everyday person long term, but it is going to cause some huge disruptions. There's $6 trillion owed in U.S. dollars to banks and bondholders from emerging country companies who depend on commodity prices, and they're going to start defaulting. These frackers who invested a trillion dollars, created a million jobs, like you say, especially in Texas, and a whole real estate boom that went much stronger than the last one there, that's going to implode because these guys are dead. They have to have over $80 to really make it long term, and under 55 they really start doing terrible. They're not going to reinvest when their wells run out. They're not going to be able to pay back their debts, and you got a half a trillion there. So I actually see this oil collapse as a trigger to the next worldwide debt crisis. We have way more debt than anybody knows. So all it takes is a trigger, just like the subprime crisis. It wasn't the whole crisis last time. It was the trigger that got the markets to start thinking about debt and worrying about debt. And the more, they, the more you look around and worry about debt, you say, holy smokes, we got more debt than anybody knows, and the whole thing comes down. So I think this is a very important trigger. I've been telling people, watch oil to finally bounce here. And boy, it's barely bouncing, and it really crashed. I think oil is going to turn around in the next few months and go back down to 30 bucks or something like that. And then people are going to have to realize these frackers and a lot of these emerging country exporters are dead. And there's going to be a lot of debts that aren't going to be paid. So you don't think oil is stabilized. Uh, you think more volatility is coming? Well, I think uh, it'll We've said for a long time, oil, if it broke 80, it's dead, which it did. It's ultimately going to 10 to $20 in the next several years, but it'll probably vary between $10 and maybe... So it still will be volatile, just going down overall. Yeah, it's not just going to go down and stay down, but it's going to be between 10 and 70 Most oil companies can't make it over 45 traditional ones. Most frackers can't make it uh, under 55 What did it, though? I mean, it was already glut was going in that direction, but the Saudis... Are they just trying to pick the time it starts uh, its descent? Well, the, the Saudis are playing like Rockefeller in, in, in the early 1900s. They are the low-cost producer with some of the largest reserves. They're, they're not uh, cutting their production because they want prices to go down. They want to eliminate their competition so they can be a dominant producer longer term. They're going to knock out the frackers. They're going to knock out the, the tar sands in Canada, Venezuela, and Iran. Uh, many countries like that are just going to fall by the wayside and never come back. That means Saudi Arabia is going to have higher prices and more dominant. And the Venezuela line. then will completely implode. Oh, yeah. Venezuela is dead. I mean, they can't even make it at 100, nevertheless, at 55. And so that's why their lights aren't on now half the time. I mean, they are already rotting. Yeah. And <laughs> Russia, Russia, I mean, oil is and, and energy is their largest export sector. And their government... Can you imagine they got a communist government... 
that's run everybody off, uh, kicked all the <laughs> entrepreneurs out, and now their oil uh, economy's dead. That is going to be a hell hole inside a hell hole. Uh, yeah. ca caller, thank you so much. Really great question. You know, what scares me, Harry, is that I don't think I've ever historically seen a bubble this big or this prolonged. So it looks like when the mega bubble starts popping, it, it could create a cascade into all these other bubbles. And, I mean, this could create a road warrior-like scenario uh, of collapse if it really goes down. Uh, and, I mean, I mean, the general public is, is so spoiled on average, I expect this to be explosive. Yeah, no, I did too. I mean, not only every bubble in history has gotten greater because our incomes and wealth are greater, and then we can leverage more through debt off that wealth. So the bubbles get greater, but this has been extended. This bubble should have peaked in 2007 and crashed and never come back. Instead, we had a first bubble in 2000 crash, a second one in 2007, and now a third one into early 2015. I say, and I predict strongly, this is the last bubble because the last bubble has been totally artificial. The other ones had demographic and technology trends behind them. They were just exaggerated. by. So space. this is the last bubble. This is the last bubble. When this one ends, they all go. Real estate around the world. The last time, okay, Spain went, Ireland went, U.S. went. Before that, Japan. I think all real estate bubbles just about are going to burst. All commodity bubbles and all stock bubbles. Because that's what they've done. Investors have jumped from one bubble to the next. And government but we have record low savings record low entrepreneurial spirit, record numbers of people on welfare. You look at the equations, we have a major depression. It is going to be hell on earth. Yeah, but that's what it takes to get a reset. I mean, the 30s was the worst time in US history, but the crisis really only lasted three years. The whole system reset itself, and then we started to grow again. All this stuff about Roosevelt, you know, building all this stuff, pulling us out, that was not the real thing. The system went through a huge reset, Huge debt deleveraging, the cost of living went down, and then things turned around, and it was led by the middle class household. Sure. It wasn't led by a bunch of special interests. That's well known, but they try to hide that fact. Well, we're in for it. I got other callers here, but you've got to go. We got Slim and Seth and John and Lewis. We'll get to all of you, but you can just make your statement. Or uh, It's just really frightening as a father to see the government, uh, Harry, digging in, getting ready to see the elites in the London Guardian, admitting they're going to you know, armored redoubts in the middle of uh, the Pacific Ocean and, and, and running uh, to New Zealand, saying they're trying to hide a global economic collapse when they've helped engineer it. That's got to really concern law enforcement and other people who are going to be stuck in the middle of all this. Yeah. Law enforcement and security systems will be a good business. Absolutely, and a very dangerous business. You're going to see that expanding. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, sure, Al. Don't forget his book uh, is free. Uh, you just pay the shipping uh, on his uh, website. We have that link up on Infowars.com, HarryDentResearch.com, Infowars.com, and PrisonPlanet.com are our websites. Stay with us.